perimeter of the United States Military Academy. A glow-fingered pass catcher, Don is fast, agile, and uses his speed to good account. Spoiled, aggressive, determined, successful. I learned a lot about leadership from Don Holliday. Donald was like a freight train coming around the fourth turn of the Indianapolis 500. More often than not, he outruns the opposing halfback to make a catch. A native of Webster, New York, the six foot two inch Hollander is only a second classman at West Point. He was a natural born leader. He could do all of it. You know, he just was born with those natural talents. The only All-America from the East and Don Hollander of the United States Military Academy. Donald Walter Hollander was born in August of 1934 and was Wally and Arlene's one and only child. He and his cousins all lived closely together. Probably his closest friend through life was his cousin, Jack Schultz. My most favorite story, we were about nine or 10, Don being as spoiled as he was. His mother got him a brand new Roadmaster bicycle with knee action. And I mean, it was the Cadillac in those days. I had an old Schwinn. So what happened is I wanted a ride on his bicycle and he wouldn't let anybody touch it. So I said, Don, nah, come on. He says, all I want to do is just ride it, around the, ride it around the house. We had five yards plugged together. And he said, nobody's riding my bicycle. So I kind of chased him around the house and he beat me to the door. He went into the house, got into the bathroom, and he locked himself in the bathroom. And <laughs> I said, I got him now. I knew exactly, I wouldn't let him out because I was going to pound on him a little bit. Well, I went out in the garage. I got the key, I unlocked his bicycle, and I took a ride on it. And all I did was ride around the house, in the backyard, a few bumps to find out how the knee action works. And I put the bicycle back, and he was still, he still locked himself and had himself locked in the, in the bathroom. So I knocked on the door and told him, come on out. I said, your bicycle rides beautifully, and that was it. We never pounded on each other, never fought over each other. He got over it. He didn't like it, but he got over it. Well, his father, had always wanted for him to go to West Point, but he died never communicating that. Well, his mother took him aside one day and said, your father wanted you to go to West Point. Well, that settled it right there. Now Don was a plebe at West Point, learning new academic courses and military drills. Those were tough, but playing football came naturally. His plebe team suffered just one loss early in the season, but won the rest. Don roomed with three other cadets his plebe year. Academics was particularly tough because none of the four of them were natural students. Jerry Amlong was his best friend, and the two of them struggled hard to get through the year. None of us were real smart, and at the end of that year, Don and I decided we wanted to continue rooming together and we ought to get some help in that room, academic help. Well, they spotted the guy that they wanted, and his name was Perry Smith. My reaction was, why would you want me to be your roommate? You know, I was a skinny, kind of nothing guy, and they said, well, we think you're smart and we're not, and you're going to get us through this place. And the three of us roomed together for the next three years. It was wonderful for me because uh, if I helped them for a lesson coming up, then when I went into the lesson myself, I was much better prepared. So I'm very much indebted to Don and to Jerry Amlong for signing me up as a roommate. West Point's football fortunes had fallen on hard times in 1951. West Point was rocked by a cheating scandal. A number of cadets, mainly football players, cheated on exams, getting answers ahead of time, sharing that information with other people, that type of thing. West Point's honor code is the bedrock of its morality. A cadet shall not lie, cheat, or steal, and will not tolerate anyone who does. And a number of people were dismissed from West Point as a result of that, not only because they cheated, but there were other people who knew about it and didn't report it. 
Just about everybody who started on the football team left school, which left the football team in a bad way, obviously. The 1951 and 52 football seasons were disastrous. But in 1953, there was hope, particularly at the end position. They had a guy named Bob Meshack at one end and a guy named Lowell Sisson at the other end. And these were very highly regarded players. So you can imagine where Don was on the same team with these two All-Americans. Don didn't start at end, but played a lot. And he caught a touchdown pass in his first varsity game against Furman. Army beat Furman that day, but lost the next game to Northwestern. Then they won two more and came up against nationally ranked Duke at New York's Polo Grounds. The Corps does its best in New York's Polo Grounds to hearten the team for a rugged meeting with Duke. The undefeated Blue Devils are headed for a share of Atlantic Coast Conference honors and are favored to win the day over the cadets. If they could win that day, Army certainly would be back up among the elite of Eastern college football. The cadets more than held their own, leading 14 to 13 late in the fourth quarter. Duke had the ball and pulled a razzle-dazzle play. To Smith on a double reverse, beautifully executed by the Blue Devils. And Smith breaks away. No one between him and the goal. Watch him go. And then comes one of the greatest plays of the season. Bob Mishak, Army end, comes from nowhere, utilizes his tremendous speed to catch Smith after a 70-yard chase. Duke tried four times to buck the ball across for the winning touchdown. But the embattled cadets repel the enemy thrust. Army holds that line. Army ended the 1953 season with a convincing 20-7 win over Navy. One of the big plays of the game was a 54-yard pass from quarterback Pete Van to Don Hollander, which set up an Army touchdown. Watch this play. A beautifully thrown pass all day to throw it. A 55-yard gain on a beautiful pass reception by Don Hollander. And again, it looks like that good old Army team. Thus, in an amazingly short time, Red Blake brings the cadets back among the great powers of the gridiron. Army turns in a seven-win, one-loss, one-tie season, winning the Lambert Trophy, symbolic of Eastern supremacy, for the sixth time in 10 years. The coach at West Point at this time was a man named Earl H. Red Blake. Now, there isn't a football fan alive today that's not heard of Red Blake. He knew football talent, and he knew that he had a great one in Don Holliday. You hear the word nowadays in sports about so-and-so's athleticism. Don Hall was the epitome of athleticism in our era. He could do all of it. We'd play basketball one-on-one -on -one or little games, and with him it was always we were going full bore. He was the same way in football. It was unique in our time to have that combination Competitive number one, plus his athletic, overall athletic ability. There was no doubt that even as a yearling, Don was a key player in football. But in basketball, he was much more of a role player. He was a defensive specialist now. And uh, when Don was under the basket, uh, rebounding and so forth, everybody on the floor knew where Don Hollander was. His elbows were flying and he was hard as a rock. If the ball was up in the air, he was after it. It was fun for me to play with somebody like that because he, he brought out those qualities and the rest of the other four guys on our team. Don was out there giving 101 all the time and uh, it made us do the same. He was aggressive, over aggressive for a basketball player really, but it went fine with the, the time and the place where he was used. And he was very quick. He could do it all. That was his forte, that end of the court, the defensive end of the court. Over the past year, Don had become close friends with quarterback Pete Van, and they had spent many, many hours working on passing and receiving. Donald Hollander was my number one receiver. Donald was like a freight train coming around the fourth turn of the Indianapolis 500 hell-bent for election, and he was just an unbelievable end. I would open up, cross, plant, look to the left. I knew where Donald was going to be. All I had to do was 
throw it about 40 yards, 45 yards down the field, and Don Holler would be there. A good end like Don Holler, I call him Holly, will make any quarterback look brilliant. A good quarterback will turn out to be an outstanding quarterback when you have ends like Donald Walter Holliter. Even though Don had missed the first two games of the season, football experts clearly saw that he had All-America talent. He could do it all. He began getting a lot of attention in the press, and many pretty girls who knew nothing about football began sending fan mail. The letters would come flying in, and he didn't have time to answer them, so I became his kind of agent or his the public affairs person and I would answer the letters and he would sign the pictures that he got from the athletic department of him playing football. 